welcome back to our videos. Today we are starting our conversations with Lady C. We'll be answering all the questions which you ask in your comments. So we are welcoming back you to the Lady Campbell's house. Thank you, Leo. Thank you for sending in your questions. Uh, Leo has chosen one or two because he got rather a lot. So we... Well, you, you as well make decisions. <laughs> well, me. you chose them and I backed you up, which is yes, great. Yes. <laughs> and thanks for sending them in and keep the questions rolling if you want. Okay? God let's, bless. Let's rock and roll. Come on, let's rock and roll. Come on, let's rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So the first very interesting and very very actual question it's regarding the coronavirus and the lockdown. So what is in your opinion uh, regarding the lockdown? Is this a good um, good idea to make it so strict? And what do you think uh, about the martial law in these difficult times? Well, it's a very complex issue, as we all know, uh, and it doesn't really have an easy answer. But I would have said that that's a very interesting question, and of course a very complex one, and there are no easy answers. This, of course, is an unprecedented situation, so one has to cut the government some slack for trying to... Uh, really deal with something that they've never dealt with before. Having said that, I think we are on the cusp of the possible danger to civil liberties. It's ultimately people are going to have to make a choice and the choice is going to be between going out and about to an extent and running the risk of possibly getting ill and possibly dying or destroying the economy. Uh, is the cure going to be worse than the disease? Uh, is it going to be worth the while of tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of people that their, the economy of various countries is completely destroyed? to spare some thousand lives. I think these are all very significant questions that need answers to. My own feeling is that it's really very simple. Uh, within a few weeks, I think people who sh want to should be allowed to cease being in lockdown. They should sign a paper saying that if they get coronavirus, they will not be using the services of the NHS. The NHS will therefore not be burdened by their choice, but it will be their choice. Uh, I really don't see any other way forward, but a mixed bag of some people choosing to be in lockdown and some people choosing to be out of it. But do you think that this is the only option to stop spreading the virus? I mean, to force people to stare at their, their houses, apartments, not to go out and close down everything. Do you see that this is, I mean, it, this can be the only way to do it. What do you think? Well, I'm not a scientist, but I am a historian of sorts. And pandemics and plagues are nothing new. And never before in the history of civilization has the whole world been put into lockdown because there was a plague. So this is a very new situation. The remedy is new. It is extreme. You could say that it has been justified up to this point because people didn't know what they were dealing with. But the reality is it is becoming clearer and clearer that what we are dealing with is a virulent virus that kills some people, doesn't kill all the people. Some people have it and don't even know they have it. Illness and death are a part of life. That's the reality. And I certainly don't want to die from it. I don't want anybody I know to die from it. I don't know. I don't want anybody I don't know to die from it. However, 
I do know people who have died from it. And you know, we've all got to die from something. Is it preferable that 50,000 Britons die of coronavirus or that 10 million Britons in three years from now are virtually starving because of what we did to avoid the 50,000 dying? These are questions that people need to ask themselves and each person needs to come to their own conclusion. But I think the government should give us a choice. And the choice should be between voluntary lockdown at this point or voluntary ordinary. That's life. Everybody has to make up their minds. It's not too harsh to, for people to choose two ways only for their future lives and their health and what will happen to them. Well, the reality is this is a very harsh situation and life is tough. And these are tough choices and the choice really is ultimately between life or death uh, it's a harsh choice but it's the choice uh, it's you get the disease you might die you might not most people won't die some will those are the realities you know we live in a world where nobody wants to actually address harsh realities well, I'm fortunate. I was brought up in a world, in a way that I had very harsh choices and I had very difficult times when I was young. And it taught me life is not a dress rehearsal. Life is sometimes very tough. People are given very harsh choices. I know this from personal experience because I was privileged to be born into privileged background and privileged to be born with a birth defect, which taught me at a very early age that life is no easy journey necessarily, which most people nowadays don't seem to understand. You know, you can moan and groan all you want. Life is tough and you have to make tough choices at times. And this situation is crystallizing issues for all of us. And we need to be mature and sensible and responsible about them and not moan about it. We need to make our choices and we need to man up and woman up and just face our, our choices because that's what life's all about. Well, there is no only problem with the health issues, of course. There is also a problem with the economy, which uh, is apparently now affecting more than 2 million people losing jobs in the United Kingdom and worldwide even more, probably in Europe and United States. And uh, what do you think, uh, if, how, how the future of the economy and the countries will be affected on this? The governments worldwide have stepped up to the plate in a way they never have before. They have been extremely proactive. They have done things they have never ever done before. Things that we are not even sure what the consequences will be. One thing we can be sure of, no government can afford to have its citizens inactive indefinitely while the government is supporting them. This one of the big issues here becomes what is a government's responsibility and what is a citizen's responsibility. The, no government is responsible for preserving the life of all of its citizens. Citizens are responsible for, to an extent, pre, are preserving their own lives. There are but if they are if they are not uh, um, if they don't know how to do it, is there a government to advise them and force them in some way in such way to to keep them safe? It's lockdown. Lockdown made absolute sense when we did not know if this was a completely deadly virus, say like Ebola. Lockdown made absolute sense lockdown becomes less sensible the more it evolves that many people have it who have no symptoms many people have it 
with slight symptoms, a few people have it with grave symptoms. It then becomes a matter of what is worse, the cure or the disease. And when the disease becomes preferable to the cure, you know you have to begin to change your reaction to the disease. But I don't think we, we should belabor this point too much. I think yeah. we should go on to something a little bit lighter, don't you? Yes. Do you think that China is responsible for this virus, creating of the virus, spreading the virus? What do you think about this? Because there was many, many talks in the media about this, even with the governments and presidents. They are saying that uh, they should um, count China responsible for this and that China should pay for all of this, what's happening with the economy in the world. Well, it would appear that China downplayed the whole situation from the very beginning. You could say most other governments would have done the same thing. Well, the Chinese did it. To an extent, they must be held accountable. How they are going to be held accountable is the difficulty. China has massive investments all over the world. Is, ev is every country that's been affected by this going to fine China? Is there going to be uh, the health version of the Nuremberg trials. To an extent, we need to understand that all governments try to protect the national interests of their country. They do minimize problems when they arise. What China has done is really what many other countries in the same situation would have done. If we in the West did not know what we were dealing with when we were second and third recipients of the disease, how could the Chinese truthfully have known what they were dealing with when they were the first recipients? Well, apparently they knew it, but they tried to hide it. Because... Well, they knew what? They knew that there was a coronavirus. They yeah. did not know to what extent. Yeah. Uh, so, so you could say worst case scenario, best case scenario, median case scenario. It's, I think the blame game beyond a certain point is not very helpful. That's my take in that, on, it, on things. In, in, in life, yeah, if somebody is indisputably to blame for something and yeah. reckless, etc. Yeah, maybe the world will find a way of leveraging China into absorbing some of our economic losses. That's obviously the aim of the governments all over the world. Yes. So let's see if it happens. It might not. It might. Yes. So let's let's switch to more more light. Yes, uh, something topics. rather. Yes, yes the question. Yes. So there, is, there was one question regarding how you keep yourself looking so young and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, oh, I have a very simple secret. Three lovers, <laughs> 27, 38 and 42. Well, this, these are the ages. Or yes, what? the ages. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, six foot four, six foot five, six foot three. <laughs> mm, one an American football player, one an American basketball player, the third an English rugby player. Oh. <laughs> uh, and they take turns uh, keeping me young. <laughs> you believe that, don't you? Well, <laughs> I don't have a choice. <laughs> well, the reality is, the reality, yeah, the reality is, I have kept out of the sun since I was 22. Yes, they say if you are exposed to sun a lot, that your skin aging more faster. Yes, yes. Oh my God. When I but was... I love sun tanning. And, well, I used yeah. to. I mean, yeah. I was brought up in Jamaica. 
Yes. You know, until I was 22, I spent most of my time around our swimming pool getting yeah. as brown as possible, <laughs> slathering on the olive oil, and okay. like this from 8 o'clock in the morning till 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Baking. Uh, yeah, yeah, and getting really nice and brown. But at 22, I stopped it because a cousin of mine who yes. was very beautiful and had ruined her skin, she was 18 years older than me, oh. she said, you're getting hyperpigmentation. She said, you have a blotch right here. I okay. still have it. Yes. She said, you're going to ruin your skin if you keep on going in the sun. Oh. She said, I've ruined mine. You're going to ruin yours. Take a tip from me. Get out of the sun. sun. Stay out of the sun. So I use Faf Factor 50 sunscreen yes. every day instead of moisturizer. And at night, I use, I always wipe off my makeup and I use, at the moment, Pond's baby lotion as face cream. And that's it. That's Cheap, all. cheerful, very simple. Oh, easy, easy. Easy. It sounds yeah. easy. It but easy. It's, it must be DNA as well, the genetics. Oh, I think to an or extent, no. yes, yeah. yes, yeah. because I come from a family where we don't line, where we line, but we don't wrinkle very easily, oh. and we don't, uh, you know, we don't have deep crevices and all the rest of it, because of course we, we were all brought up to, to not grimace, yes, but yes. to speak in a particular way, yes. and I suppose it's paid off. Oh, very you know? good. So, very good. Yeah. You know, so and, but I mean, lucky you get this touch of the God for perfection. <laughs> thank you, my dear, but there's another reason as well. Yes. People don't realise I'm 122. <laughs> <laughs> I lie about my age. I'm only 122. <laughs> How was uh, growing up in Jamaica? Well, I have to tell you, I think I was very lucky to be born and brought up in Jamaica when I was. Jamaica, oh, well, Jamaica in the 1950s, which is when I was a child, mm -hmm. was a magical place for people like us and families like ours. It was absolutely safe. There was not a population explosion as it became. Uh, it was a very secure society. In England, in Europe, there was austerity. In Jamaica and America, there was prosperity. So we had wonderful weather. We had everything that money could buy. We had loads of servants. Uh, we had security. We had freedom. As children, you know, we were encouraged to go outside and stay outside every day, which we did. Uh, and if we wanted to get on our bicycles and ride for a mile away from the house, we were allowed to do it. You couldn't do that nowadays. Uh, it was really a free life. Also, because in the 1950s there were tremendous colour issues worldwide, and Jamaica was at the cutting edge of the colour question. So, in Jamaica, we had far more social interaction with the different races than you did in America or England, which meant that until I was eight, I literally did not register that people were a, a different colour or what a different colour meant. I remember when I was eight, an incident happened that because I alluded to somebody's colour, Okay. without realising that I was blundering and my mother read me the riot act. Until then, I had no idea that there was such a thing as colour differences. Okay, what, what's your favourite part of uh, growing up in Jamaica? Which the period of time you still keep as the most favourite of your life? Well, I would have to say my childhood in the 1950s. Because I was born in... 1949 towards the end of 1949 so really the first 10 years of my life were 
halcyon days in terms of the country. The country was not independent yet. It became independent in 1962 and it was one of the fastest growing economies in the Western world. So it was quite prosperous in the 1960s. So then of course the more prosperous it became was the more the politicians of both parties decided that they were going to use the prosperity of the country to increase their power uh, and cause all sorts of mischief for everybody in the country, which they did. Politicians will inevitably cause mischief if they're given half a chance. I think people have to be very aware of the fact that most politicians are not your friend. They are your natural enemy. Okay. <laughs> Even today? <laughs> Always. Always. <laughs> Always. Even in these times. Always. Having said that, Yes. I think we, at the moment, are very fortunate to have a Prime Minister that thinks outside of the box. box. Mm -hmm. And I actually have a great deal of respect for Boris Johnson as a leader. Of course, he has studied history. It helps to have studied history. Okay. The Blairs and the Bushes of this world have never studied history. They don't know anything about history, so they've made the most disastrous mistakes. Uh, for instance, had they studied history going back even a hundred years, they would have known that Afghanistan was the graveyard of empires. The Russians didn't do it, the Americans didn't do it, we didn't do it, and we should have known it. I knew it because I've studied history. Boris Johnson has studied history. Boris Johnson knows that there's very little that happens today that hasn't happened in the past. He has the benefit of history. He also has the benefit of thinking outside of the box. I sued Boris Johnson for libel. And his reaction was so wonderful that I knew he was going to be a really good prime minister because of his reaction when I sued him for libel. It was <laughs> completely unexpected and it showed that he is not constrained by petty thoughts, moralities. Mm -hmm. He okay. deals with the bigger picture and solutions and the big issue. Okay, good. So uh, in Jamaica, when you were a <clears throat> teenager, you were going <laughs> to school, what was your daily routine? Because you, you, your family, your parents, you didn't need to do much of things because you had your own household and uh, the staff who were working for for you what what well, you were you, doing every day how do you well you were just on the sun next to the pool well <laughs> how if, you spend your days if you were at school yes. you went to school oh, i did not go to boarding school my brother and sisters did so they stayed at school i'd come home in the afternoon i had to do my homework Mm -hmm. uh, and I would sneak out and go and visit a friend. Sneak and out, this meant like nobody knows. Yeah, because parents. we weren't allowed to sneak out, okay. but I'd sneak out. Okay. <laughs> and owing oh, you know, our head gardener would watch out for when daddy and mommy <laughs> were coming home, and then he would, he would run and fetch me, so I'd run back. <laughs> <laughs> it helped having servants. They were really good. And uh, so this that was, was your friend or boyfriend? Sorry? No, this was. Uh, no, no, just a friend. Out. Just, just a friend. friend. Uh, my best friend. She ah, lived okay. nearby. Ah, and, okay. uh, and then during the holidays, we had perpetual parties. Oh, we that's had. Nice. A, we were very fortunate as a family because we had a swimming pool that was away from the house. Mm -hmm. Other friends of ours had swimming pools that were not away from the house. So it bothered the parents. Ours was well away from the house, so it didn't bother our parents. We could make as much noise as we wanted, do whatever we wanted, and it didn't disturb anybody. Yes. It disturbed the servants, though. Yeah. <clears throat> and <coughs> Sorry. I remember when I was about 16, 
we decided that mommy was a real cow <laughs> because she called us together and she said now the servants have been complaining because you children have had a hot and cold running party for the last six weeks you have them running up and down between the pool and the house which was quite a distance you know fetch me a drink fetch me a sandwich fetch me some cigarettes blah 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 and she said three days no friends no because the servants need a break we thought she was such a cow <laughs> of course she was absolutely right yeah you know Holly who came here to be offered a drink so you'd ring the bell and the butler would have to come up and then he'd take the order have to go down back into the house get the drink bring, bring it back, back up and when he come back so you oh you're already having new orders yes for him. <laughs> yes and then you know we'd say oh edward tell cookie that we'll have we're having 10 for lunch so cookie would have to make sandwiches for 10 Ten. and i mean it's work it was hard work but we didn't think of it like that because you know if when you're young and you're spoiled and you expect things and take things for granted and it's by making mistakes like we made that and having our parents point things out to us as mummy did and she was right to do it you know it was it was the right thing to do back off have some consideration for the staff oh, yes that's important but we loved our servants yeah. i've got to tell you i remember when we were children because my mother was very jealous so as soon as we became too attached to a nanny she'd get rid of the nanny because she never ever wanted us to love the nanny more than her oh. but of course we saw far more of well, my brother and I's elder sister and I were a threesome so we had two nannies uh, until we were about six or seven then we got older and so there was only one nanny because my little sister was born when I was six but we used to love our nannies more than our and it every time the nanny was got rid of it was such grief and heartache for us yeah because you get very attached friendly close attached and mm -hmm. then it's done mm -hmm. it's a new one mm -hmm. so during these parties on the pool you're having nice weather sun cocktails music it was soft there, drinks soft drinks soft drinks mm -hmm. we weren't allowed to drink alcohol no. No. But did you sneak out something in? No, no, no. We would never have to. No, we were allowed to smoke, which most children of our age were uh, not. Yes, but, but no, he, no cocktails. No I was allowed to smoke after the age of 15. <laughs> and did you so smoke? I got my psychiatrist to tell daddy that I needed to smoke for my good health. <laughs> <laughs> my father did not like smoking. I yes. did not. And he had been. I started to smoke at 12. Oh, mm. Well, well, this was Jamaica. Oh. You know, Jamaica people sort of did at home school. or where at school? Not at school, at home. Oh, right at home. Mm. Okay, because today kids mostly started smoking at schools. Well, I started at five and gave up at eight, and then started <laughs> at twelve. <laughs> well, okay, that's very, very, very precocious. Yes, but yes. we were precocious in those days. It was. And it was regarded as cool. Nobody realized that smoking was a terrible habit. Yeah, in, in one period of time, it was like a trend that everyone smoked. Oh, it was cool. It yes. was glamorous. It's, um, so during these parties and swimming pool, there was no accidents, no fights, no... Fights? Love affairs, nothing. Oh, well, there would have been romances and, all, oh, yes, and yes. crushes and all the rest of it. But fights, not yes. that I remember, no. Yeah. No. But how it, was... Uh, this romance is flirting dating at this time how, how this how well, you can... young people teenagers yes. you know but it was all very innocent yes everybody was very correct and nobody did anything on toward i remember when a friend of ours got pregnant oh <gasps> it was at like oh god oh she was 17. 17 okay it was <gasps> you know shock Oh, complete horror. Um, the boys used to break their duck 
often with with the maids or with or with our ladies of the night. <laughs> but they did not bother decent girls. Okay. It just wasn't done. And your friend, she got pregnant with when she was she, seven. She yeah. got pregnant with a cousin of mine. Oh. And how was the well, situation? We won't go into it. It didn't it did, did not end well. Ah okay. So so we'll not go in more of this. So and at this time, did you have any place where people were going out in Jamaica, like the clubs, oh, hotels, yes, of course. restaurants? Oh yes. How yeah. how was this in Jamaica? Well, there were a few nightclubs that we used to go to that were very fashionable, and people like us were allowed greater degree of freedom mm -hmm. than you know the law meant you weren't supposed to drink i remember there was a there was a club that we used to go to that but we always were allowed to drink if we you know a nightclub yes uh, and at home we were allowed to drink champagne and we were allowed to drink water, uh, a glass of wine, but we weren't allowed to drink anything more. And it wasn't on an everyday thing either. Okay. It would be for special occasions. If we were going out to a nightclub, we were allowed to drink at 15, 16. Oh. It was perfectly, you know, everybody did it. It was. Yes. They, I don't know if it was against the law, but if it was against the law, nobody cared. We still did it. Yeah. <laughs> as, as long as you didn't get drunk and or behave problems, badly yeah. and create problems. Yes. So it was a way of being brought up to be civilized. And people were. Oh, that's, that's nice. Mm. What other activities were in Jamaica for young people? Well, times. there were discotheques, there were yeah. nightclubs, there were uh, there any beach clubs. You know, we we'd have our beach clubs that we'd go to. Uh, you know, there was the yacht club. Uh, everybody swam a lot. We had pools. We go water skiing. Uh, you know. Many people had country houses, so we go for country house weekends. Uh, and all very simple, innocent fun, you know, pretty much built around the beach or uh, at my family's country house. We had uh, a natural spring and we had oh. a river running through the property. Oh. So we used to go and swim in the river, which had a very deep section. Yes. And there was a bridge that, I suppose, about a hundred feet above it, that went from one side of the mountain to the other, uh, where the locals would walk across it. We didn't realize yeah. that because we used to often swim in the nude. We oh, didn't all of you. I never did, but my brother did, oh, and okay. several of his friends did. We didn't realize that oh. from up there, when they looked out, <laughs> everyone was stark or naked. We couldn't see each other. Yes, of course, yeah. But they could see us. <laughs> <laughs> There's one interesting question. So after the lockdown, mm -hmm. uh, which one of the Richard Caring's uh, establishments would you like to go first? First? Yes. Well, I often go and have lunch with a friend of mine at George. George, you like George. So, and they're very nice there. Okay. And she lives just around the corner from there. And we go quite a lot. So this is your favorite place? Yeah, I've not been to the new Annabelle's and I'm no. not in any rush to go to the new Annabelle's. Why? Well, in my twenties, I spent practically every night of my life in the old Annabelle's. In those days, that's where everybody went for their the start of their romance. Uh, in fact, it's where I met my great love. Uh, and, you know, you'd walk into Annabelle's and you'd know 80% of the people there. It was wonderful. 
Well, that's when you're in your 20s. When you're mm. my age, you'd be really very pathetic if you were still doing the same thing. You know, we do privately in each other's yeah. houses and for country house weekends what in our 20s we did in Annabelle's. Well, that was then. I don't want to revisit those days. I don't no. want to replicate them. No, they were then. They, and you and, want to keep this old memory well, from these times? It's called Annabelle's, but it's certainly not what Annabelle's was. It's It has the name in common, but nothing else. Do I... I couldn't care less about going, quite frankly. Uh, I've been asked repeatedly. I've never wanted to go. Mm -hmm. uh, if I go, I'll go. But I mean, I'm in no rush to go. And if I don't go, that will be fine as well. It might even become a badge of honor not to go. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it's if the last time I went to Annabelle's, which was the old Annabelle's, I went with Contrary Phillips, who you wouldn't know who Contrary Phillips was. Contrary Phillips was one of England's leading band leaders. He played at Buckingham Palace, he played at all smart dances, he uh, used to play at the Lanesborough. He was a great, great guy. And Contrary was one of the founders of Annabelle's, oh. one of the founding members of Annabelle's. And Confrey and I, and one or two other people went after ball. And it's the last time I went. It was about a year before the old Annabelle shut down, maybe two, yes. I don't know, so long ago now. It's, Time, time means something different when you're 122. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and uh, you know, it, it wasn't the same as going when you were young and involved. Yes. Okay. The eyes, you know, we knew practically no one. We knew the staff. The staff yes. knew us. But... We knew practically none of the members. I mean, the whole ethos of the club had changed. It was people that you had no idea who they were. Uh, while in the olden days, it was like one huge group of friends. Everybody knew everybody else. So it was really cozy. And I couldn't care less about going out to a place to be seen. I mean, I couldn't care less who sees me and who doesn't, quite frankly, you know. I'd be very pathetic if at my age I had to believe that my existence matters because of who sees me. Yes. So no, it's not interested, no. <laughs> really. And the last time you went was with your friend? Confrey. Confrey, yes. 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 And how was your last time at Annabelle's? It wasn't the same as when we no. were young, you know, too many strange people. <laughs> strange? <laughs> what do you mean strange? Well, they were strangers. And some of them were strange as well as being strangers. So George is your favourite of the... I will, I, yes, yeah. if I'm, if I'm going to go anywhere, I'll go to George. George. Okay. Yeah. And what do you like there? The atmosphere, the people, the staff? The staff are very nice. The services. The service is very good. It's small, it's cozy, it's got good food. Uh, That's important. I go with a friend who I like. It's what it's like our place. Your place. Okay. Yeah. So it's your uh, secret place. No 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 <laughs> nothing <laughs> nothing like that. Nothing no. like that. Yeah. Because people usually have some secret places, no. spots where they go usually no, with friends. It's it's, no. it's just a cozy place, cozy to go. place to go. I like cozy places. I gather the new Annabelle's is lavish and extravagant and glitzy and over the top and you know. Well, today it's more young people there. 
Well, this is the point I'm making. Yes. When we yeah. were young, yeah. it meant it mattered to us. Yes. yes. So today, to our so younger generation, it's, it's matter. Which is good. Yeah. It's good, you know. But it's not appropriate for a seventy-year-old woman to want to go to Annabelle's even one night a week. Well, to find new boyfriend. I think my boyfriends can find me. <laughs> Well, thank you very much uh, for today's talk and our chatting. It was really interesting to hear some of your experience and we will hear more and more of them in our future talks. It was very interesting and I hope it's as well very interesting for all of you who are watching our videos. And of course, keep asking the questions. We'll, uh, Lady C will uh, answer on them how she answered today and we will try to keep all videos a bit short so that uh, it's not too long and get too bored so it will not be many many questions in and if you're video. not interested that's fine <laughs> <laughs> but if you are that's great well we hope they are because we are doing this <laughs> well this is meant to entertain yes and yes if people are entertained, great, but if they're not, that's okay too. Well, yes. I'll read a good book instead. <laughs> I'm reading a very good book at the moment. I love reading good books. Yeah, that's that's another uh, that, uh, ent entertainment thing what we can do. Okay, good. Thank you very much for watching our video and following us and asking our questions and we'll be with you soon again. Yes, and do send in any other questions you have that occur to you. <laughs> Anything. We don't have to answer, but you can ask. You can be as daring as you want. I don't mind daring. <laughs> Thanks, goodbye, and keep safe. Thank you. Goodbye, keep safe, Bye. and see you very soon.